We just finished talking about halogenation of alpha carbons under basic conditions. Well, we can also do it under acidic conditions. And we'll get a different result. Under basic conditions, if it's possible to add more than one halogen, it will. But under acidic conditions, it will only add one halogen, even if additional alpha hydrogen or hydrogens on an alpha carbon exist. So let's examine why. So let's go back to the same substrate we looked at previously. Since it is possible to do more than one halogenation, so we've got two hydrogens here. And let's change up the halogen and we'll use chlorine this time. And in this case, we're going to add in some acid. We're going to use acetic acid. And our product will only halogenate one time. So we're going to leave a hydrogen on there. We'll have a chloride there only once. Now, Let's look at the mechanism to see why that's the case. So, first thing we're going to do is we will protonate um, our carbonyl oxygen. So, I'm just going to start writing the mechanism right up here. some lone pairs up here. We're going to protonate that and break that bond right there. That is going to form this intermediate. Put a plus charge there now because we've added a proton. We still have our hydrogens here. Next, we're still going to need to deprotonate this. So let's choose one of our better bases that we have in here. Oh, we generated one right over here. In fact, I should probably draw it here because when we deprotonated this, we generated a base in solution. So we've got this base right here. Let's use it to steal one of these protons. And when we do that, we're not going to form a negative charge right here. This base is not quite that good, and we're under acidic conditions. If we had a negative charge right here, that would be a very good base. It would pick up a proton from our acid that's in solution. So instead of doing that, we're going to form something different. We're going to go up into here, form a double bond there. And then this double bond is going to go up onto the oxygen there. So that will instead form an alcohol group up here. And it'll be an enolate. So, got that. We still have a hydrogen there. Now, there's an equilibrium here that we could use to reform the double bond here. And that will put a small negative charge here. But 
or, or resonance, I should say, not really an equilibrium. So let's draw the other resonance structure. And because of that, that's going to put a slight negative charge here. And that's going to be enough for the reaction to happen. So we'll take our electrons, we'll come down, we'll reform that bond, and we'll put our electrons on that carbon. Now, this is by far not the most abundant uh, species in this reaction mixture, but we're going to use it to explain the reactivity that we're going to see. So we didn't want to directly form this ion, but there's a resonance that can form it. It's a little bit stabilized due to this resonance structure here. So we can do it. So bring in our chloride. We're going to do an SN2 reaction on that. And then from there, it's going to form this product. Or intermediate, I should say. We're almost done. We're going to have our base come in and pick off that proton. That forms our product. Now, you might be looking at this and say, hmm, well this intermediate looks very similar to that intermediate right here. And this is what we use to continue the reaction, right? So why does the base pick off this proton and not that one? Well, this is electron withdrawing. And so we're going to pull electron density away from here. And it's going to make this proton more acidic. And so it's easier to pull this proton off. And because of that, this will not substitute again because we can't form the intermediate that's going to continue on. This is not as stable as this one is. See. Before, under basic conditions, once we formed this, uh, the, the intermediate, the second product here, this proton became more reactive. Under acidic conditions, it becomes less reactive because it's harder to form this intermediate that would be used to continue the reaction on for a second time. So that will slow down further reactions and it will make it so that we can only uh, halogenate one time rather than multiple times that we can under basic conditions. So this just gives us a little bit of control over how many halogens we want to put on our molecule. If we want to put many on there, we'll choose basic conditions. If we would like to only put one, we'll choose acidic conditions. And this is why.